to all the students out there listening and watching this video, I am Teacher Claire once again for ECOM Channel. This video lesson is centered on the discussion about the importance of planning in the conduct of a research and the parts of a research plan. So let's start learning together. The image emphasized a collaborative effort in planning for something. Similarly, since in high school, research is mostly held in groups, cooperation among the group members is highly expected. Now that you are all done with your research titles and finally they are approved for use, your next step is to highlight the essential procedure to follow and to list the significant ideas from which you center your research study. So you have to set the focus. It is now high time to plan. A researcher would always have initial thoughts in mind of what he wants to do and how he will do it. The best way not to forget them is to put them into a short document known as research plan. By definition, a research plan is a concise description of the proposed study which includes the most important steps the researcher would follow. It definitely serves as the researcher's guide in conducting the study. Meanwhile, the research plan serves several essential purposes like the following. First, it forces you to think through every aspect of the study. Second, it facilitates evaluation of the study by you and your research group members. Well, two heads are always better than one. We could always easily discover certain things to change about the research study when we work with a team. Third, it provides detailed procedure to guide you in the conduct of the study. And the fourth one is, it saves you time because it provides structure for the study and it reduces the probability of costly mistakes and generally results in higher quality research. Definitely, you should take note of those purposes of a research plan before you even start writing your research plan. Now, let's talk about the parts of a research plan for a qualitative study. The first part is the title of the study. Certainly, it is important that you include your approved title in your research plan. Here is an example of qualitative research title. The next part is the rationale. In this part of the research plan, you are expected to write a short overview of what is your research study all about. So this is just a very concise introduction. Considering the provided research title, look at this example rationale. The example rationale gave us the answer to the question, what? What is the research all about? It is all about using online games as part of classroom setting and how students view them. Let's have the next part, which is research problem. In this part of the research plan, you just have to list the questions your study targets to answer. Using the example research study, here are the examples of research problem or research questions. Be sure that the questions you construct and include in your research problem part should be the questions that could give you the necessary data you need to solve the problem your study focus with. You have to ensure that they serve that purpose. Our next part is the importance of the research study. Here, you just simply have to state the most significant effect of your study. The next part is procedure. At this part of the research plan, you have to list the research variables, the method that you are going to use, and of course, you have to give a little explanation of the sample size that you are going to use in your research study. Let us first have variables. So when we say variables, it shows the cost and effect of your study. Utilizing the example research, the variables of the study would be the following, the independent and the dependent variables. So the independent variable is the online game applications for class performance task. And the dependent variable is the perceptions of the students. 
The independent variable is the online game applications for class performance task because it is the cause or the reason why the researcher wants to get the perceptions of the students. The dependent variable is the perception of the students. It is the effect of the independent variable. The method signals the collection of data. You have to at least give a description of how you're going to gather or collect the information that you needed in accordance with the study that you are conducting. And here is an example for the method. This time is the sample size. For the sample size, show who will participate in the research study. Who are the people you're going to use to answer the questions that you have enlisted under the research problem. And second to the last part of the research plan is the expected result. This is of course very important. So you have to include your target outcome. What do you want to achieve in conducting this research study? So specify it in this part. And the last part of the research plan is the bibliography. Always remember to cite and list the references that you have utilized or employed in the conduct of your study. This part would show where you took your data other than from your respondents or from your sample size. And those are the parts of the research plan. After providing suited information in each of these parts, you must have this research plan approved before you start your qualitative research study. That means your teacher has to approve the research plan before you could even start your qualitative research study. So that's it for today. I hope you learned from this video lesson. Definitely, I would love to have you again in the next video lesson that I am going to create. Thank you for watching and for listening. Have a nice day, everyone. God bless you.